Hey, everybody. Welcome to a bonus edition of Tone the Slab, pitching with David Cohn. David, James, myself, we had a chance to talk with the consensus top pitching prospect in all of baseball ahead of this season. Guys, Grayson Rodriguez of the Baltimore Orioles kind of fits the mold if you were going to create a pitcher in the lab. 6'5", around 230, and he has displayed a ton of fire and consistency in his time as a pro pitcher. David, this kid hasn't changed his grips since he was a youngster, around 12 or 13, and he's bringing all of this on a steady track, hopefully to the big leagues with the Orioles later this summer. He was impressive to talk to. Really was. I cannot wait to see him make his debut and get up here where we could watch him pitch more often. Uh, he is a unicorn in that you don't see young pitchers like this that are that polished. He has potentially four above average pitches plus major league pitches. And that is just so rare. Generally speaking, if you have one or two above average, they call it plus pitches, uh, you know, on a scale of 20 to 80, he grades out at a six, six and a half, even seven on some of his pitches. If you grade it out at eight or 20 to 80, if you grade it out at 80, as an example, 80 would be a Nolan Ryan fastball, you know, hundred miles an hour. Plus Randy Johnson is the top of the scale in terms of fastballs. Uh, this, this kid's really, really something to watch. His changeup is elite right now. His power fastball obviously is there slide a curveball to go with it. That are both potential plus pitches as well. So it's almost unfair to have that kind of stuff, that kind of well above average stuff across the board with your entire repertoire. He made his season debut on Friday for the Norfolk Tides uh, at the Orioles AAA affiliate against Charlotte. Overwhelmingly dominant, four shutout innings, one hit, one walk, seven strikeouts. Sky's the limit for him. David, you mentioned Nolan Ryan. I think it's pretty fitting. Big kid from Texas. He talked about how he wants to pitch deeper into games. He also touched on going through the minor league system and coming up with Adley Rushman, the heralded Top catching prospect for the Orioles. D.L. Hall is another top pitching prospect for the Orioles. Baltimore has the pieces to be a team on the rise in the coming seasons. And if they're going to be able to do that, Grayson Rodriguez is going to be a big reason why. So without further ado, it's our conversation with top pitching prospect, the top arm throughout minor league baseball, Grayson Rodriguez for the Baltimore Orioles. Grayson, thanks so much for uh, joining us here this week. Pleasure to have you. And uh, we are you know, recording this near the end of spring training, and you've presumably been told, you know, you're going to be starting the season at AAA Norfolk. But I think the big question, or one of them is, will Grayson Rodriguez's big travel camper be making the trek to Norfolk? And, and will that be the living situation for you to start the AAA season? Sadly, no. Um, you know, I the last two or three seasons, that's been the plan. Uh, but, you know, new to minor league baseball this year, uh, the clubs are paying for us somewhere to stay. Um, so, you know, we're going to roll with that. There's no point in taking it and then, you know, having to pay out of your pocket. So I'd rather stay somewhere for free. I hear that. What What, what is the future like for your, your big RV camper? Um, well, right now, my brother's just now getting into travel ball. Um, he's in the eighth grade. So him and my dad have been taking it every weekend to Houston or Dallas, uh, wherever they're playing in their tournaments. So not a bad uh, travel accommodation right there. Not at all. Not at all. Is, is he a pitcher too? Yeah. He, well, right now he's doing both, but, uh, the thing about him is he's so big, he's already bigger than me and he's 14. So, uh, <laughs> wow. It's uh, pretty impressive. I know my mom had posted a picture or something the other day on Facebook and somebody put it on Twitter and I retweeted it and it was kind of, it kind of took off a little bit, but uh, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's huge. You know, I, I, Grayson, I always, and thanks again for coming on the podcast. I always ask these questions because I was in a similar situation. I was a, an amateur pitcher and then I, you know, I was drafted out of high school and I had that big decision to make at that particular time. And I'm sure you had plenty of opportunities to go to college. I'm sure you had several scholarship offers, probably in Texas, Texas A&M or, or somewhere down there. I'm sure. Um, what was that decision process like? I mean, when you started to really develop as an amateur pitcher and then, you know, Hey, wait, th this is coming together. I might get drafted. I might pitch in college. 
What was that like, that decision making for you to go ahead and take that professional contract? Yeah, so um, I was recruited by Texas A&M, uh, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Um, you know, a lot of my family members went to A&M, so I grew up in Aggie, uh, the reason why I committed there. Um, but, you know, fortunate for me, I had always thrown pretty hard now in terms of pitching and mechanics and stuff. That was always wild. But, uh, no, I mean, I, I got drafted in the first round, and it was kind of a shocker to us um, that I went that early. And, uh you know, ultimately, you know, professional baseball is a dream. So that's what I wanted to do. Um, and, you know, so far it's been a good decision. You know, I'm very fortunate to have been with the Orioles, um, you know, our analytics team that's come in and helped me develop as a pitcher. And, and, you know, right now we're working to get to the big leagues. You know, just for perspective, guys, let's go back to the fact that Grayson's little brother is larger than he is. Grayson is six foot five. 220 grace where are we at now 220 225 well, pounds yeah two 220 is what we were drafted at now we're at 240 okay. i know all the, the bios are still saying 220 but uh you know we we've gained a few pounds since then good pounds all right so 22 years of age and i think this is cool because it's been well documented that you gained 25 pounds of muscle entering your draft year in high school and we love having pitchers from all walks of life, older pitchers, younger pitchers like yourself who maybe aren't too far removed from their amateur days so that the current amateurs can kind of take away something from these chats that we have. What were you eating and what kind of workouts were you doing as a 17 year old to kind of put on that much mass? Um, a lot of peanut butter and honey sandwiches. That was the, that was the move, uh, chocolate milk, getting lots of carbs. Um, you know, kind of like just any other kind of high schooler, you know, not really weighing all that much. Um, you know, I was tall, but, but a little lanky. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the facility that I was going to is the same facility that I go to now. Uh, it's APEC. It's in Tyler, Texas. Uh, it's where Patrick Mahomes grew up going to train. Um, it was a first kind of first developed for football. And then uh, as it took off in that industry, they bought into the baseball side of things and, you know, that's, that's where I started going in high school and into pro ball now. And, and they were able to, you know, kind of change me and, and make me a make me a better performer. The APEC facility, you said that you've taken the throwing program that the Orioles have you on and you kind of mixed it with theirs. What parts of each of the two were you blending together? Um, you know, I'm a big long toss guy, so. Long toss is a part of my program. Um, you know, weighted balls, the, they, can, they can be dangerous at times, um, but, you know, I'd, I'd use those a little bit in the off season, um, not during the season, but, uh, you know, just kind of blending in uh, distances when bullpen start. Um, you know, I kind of like to go a little bit earlier, uh, getting off the mound, just kind of getting into the feel of things that way you start throwing bullpens and stuff, you kind of have somewhat of an idea of what you're doing and, you know, you don't, it doesn't feel like a stranger, but, uh, you know, really just kind of just picking and, and, and stuff like that, kind of meshing them together. Yeah. Grayson, we, you know, we, um, I've seen some videos looking forward to watching you pitch. Um, the thing that amazes me and, you know, I guess the question becomes for me is, Growing up, who were your idols? Who did you try to emulate or pictures that maybe you saw that were college level, professional level that you aspired to kind of emulate a little bit? And then secondly, how do you have such a rounded repertoire already? I mean, uh, who was, who was your, how was your coaching? I mean, all you have four plus pitches graded already by several very well-respected scouts um, or scouting bureaus. So how did that come about? How did you get so polished and developing all those pitches and who did, who did you like? Who, who, who was your, your go-to guy that you liked to watch the pitch growing up? Well, uh, being from Nacogdoches, um, you know, we kind of lived in, in the middle of Houston and Dallas. So uh, my dad was a Rangers fan and my mom was an Astros fan. So watching Clemens and Pettit and, uh, you know, Cliff Lee when he was in Texas, um, those are some pictures that kind of really that I would go back to and, and watch videos of. Um, you know, when I was – about 10 or 11, I started taking pitching lessons uh, from a college pitching coach in my hometown, uh, who's now the head coach at Texas State. But uh, the same, the grips that I learned when I was 10 years old are the same grips that I'm throwing now, every single one of them. 
Um, so I don't know. I'm sure that's kind of had something to do with it. Um, you know, holding the, holding the ball exactly the same, you know, my entire life. Um, but yeah, I mean, everything's been, uh, everything's been the same and just kind of working on getting it better each year. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I was fortunate to watch a lot of good pitchers, um, on TV and, and loved watching baseball as a kid, you know, I, it was, it was on the TV every night in our house. And, uh, you know, I loved it. That, that's fantastic. The same grips guys that that's pretty remarkable. You think about since he's 10 years old, that's fantastic. Uh, tell you know, in your own words, g- give us your repertoire, you know, four seam, two seam, uh, curve slider chain, change up grip circle. Tell, tell us, uh, you know, just basically, you know, uh, what those grips are and what the confidence you have in those pitches. Yeah, so it's just the basic four pitch mix uh, with a cutter, fastball, four seam, uh, slider, curveball, and a changeup. Uh, the changeup I learned about two years ago, um, 2019 to 2020. Uh, you know, the Orioles have worked with me about learning a changeup because I was just a breaking ball guy, uh, curveball and slider. Um, and the changeup is something that really took off and is now my best pitch. Um, using edgertronic cameras and track man and seeing how the pitch spins and kind of not necessarily throwing a textbook change up, but one that spins pretty hard um, and like a three o'clock spin direction, which almost creates a vacuum uh, and just sucks it straight down. Um, and that's kind of what I've seen the most success with, um, you know, out of my repertoire as of late. Um, but that's, it's a pitch I'm going to be throwing a lot this year. Now, is that the technology, is that available to you in the minor leagues on bullpen sessions during the season, or is it something just in spring training where you kind of refine everything? No, no, the Orioles do a good job of making sure it's available uh, at all the affiliates. Um, spring training, you know, obviously there's a lot of guys in camp, so uh, there's a lot more machines, a lot more cameras and, and units and stuff. But uh, no, when we break off uh, full season to affiliates and stuff, each uh, each level has their own uh, – slow motion camera, mobile track man, stuff like that. So we're able to use the the data pretty easily every time we stand on the mound, throw a bullpen or in the game. Brinson, are you attending to that information throughout the season? Are you looking at it in between starts, day after your performance? How often are you checking out that information? Yeah, um, you know, it's a, it's a big part of my game. Um, you know, I don't necessarily just – study the hitter side of it but uh in terms of how my stuff plays and how my stuff's spinning uh, it's kind of important to stay on top of it that way problem problems don't really create um you're able to stay on top of things um you know if you throw a bad pitch in a bullpen or you start to develop bad habits it gets tackled pretty quickly uh you know before before it turns into a problem or if you have a bad start you know you can look at what you're doing in the bullpen compared to last week's bullpen um and things like that. You know, guys, I'm assuming, David, it's pretty rare to hear of a pitcher who has the same grips since he was a child, you know, going through grammar school. So, Grayson, when you're gaining this professional experience, where do you feel like you're making gains? Because it's like that 10,000-hour rule. You, You have these pitches. You have these grips that are just such second nature to you. Where are you seeing the leaps that you're taking? Um, you know, honestly, how to read swings in a game, uh, how to call a game, you know, kind of call your own pitches and stuff. Um, you know, that was something that I had struggled with when I first got into pro ball, uh, what pitch to throw next, um, depending on what the hitter swing was before, um, you know, it was, it was quick to go to an off speed pitch or, or something else when the guy can't hit a fastball and, just being able to know when to stick with a pitch or when not, not to stick with one, Um, you know, kind of learning about how to be a pro and and throwing every five days, five to six days, because, you know, growing up as an amateur, you're throwing every seven days, every eight days, or just whenever you have a tournament. Um, But, you know, pro ball is a little bit different uh, getting on that five day rotation or six day, whatever it might be, uh, depending on the staff, but yeah, just kind of learning how to, how to, you know, deal with baseball every day. Have they, have they given you any insight and uh, maybe up in your workload this year a little bit, allowing you to, to get past four or five innings per start, maybe get a little deeper into games. I know you've said, 
I think every pitcher would love that opportunity and to be able to get a little deeper into games. Uh, have they talked to you about your workload this year at all? Um, you know, not specifically in terms of uh, inning limit. Um, you know, obviously, like you said, it's we're nearing the end of spring training. We've only got about three or four days left uh, before we break camp. But uh, that's something that will be discussed in our uh, end of spring training meetings going into the season. Uh, last year, you know, it was – it was kind of frustrating because, you know, obviously there was a strict inning limit we had to follow. Um, that was large part due to the fact that we didn't have a normal season in 2020 uh, with COVID. So, you know, they were extra careful with all of our pitchers. Um, I think I only went six innings once last year and the rest were just stopped at five, uh, really no matter the pitch count. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, I would have liked to throw uh, more innings in games where it was pretty dominant, but, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, you're not trying to waste all your bullets in the minor leagues. So, yeah, that that's so true. It is. It takes takes a mature perspective to understand that uh, as frustrating as that can be at times. But uh, you know, I really, uh, you know, I think it's a situation with the Orioles. You're in a great spot. You've got a lot of great prospects around you. Uh, have you had a chance to pitch to Adley Rushman and, and your future catcher, probably, and maybe the best prospect in all the game? A lot of, lot of the, a lot of the boards have you in the top five of, of top prospects in all of baseball, and him at number one. That's got to be pretty exciting, knowing that you guys have a chance to kind of hook up here in the future and do do something pretty special. Yeah, no, he's a he's a pretty talented hitter. Um, I'm I'm pretty thankful that he's on my team because. He has stepped in the box against me uh, quite a bit, you know, at the alternate side and in spring training. And, you know, I've faced him, I don't know, I'd say a decent amount. And he's already tagged me for, I think, three or four home runs. So, uh, you know, I mean, it kind of goes to show kind of how special a hitter he is. Um, and for some whatever reason, it's it's tough to get him out. Um, but the last time I faced him, I broke his bat, so I still hang that over his head. But – uh you know, just a phenomenal talent, you know, switch hitting catchers that, that can hit for power and average just don't come along like that. Um, you know, he's just kind of an impressive player. Yeah, he's pretty good, good behind the dish, too, we hear defensively as well. I mean, he's kind of the total package. So that, that, that's that got to be exciting, too, moving forward. Oh, yeah. You know, the way he kind of conducts the game back there, um, you know, if I ever, you know, obviously as a pitcher, runners are getting on base uh, throughout the game and, you know, there's a little bit of me in the back of my mind that wishes that they'll steal because um, I feel like, you know, our chances are pretty good at throwing them out. Um, you know, the arm, the arm is special. It's there. Um, you know, a lot of catchers have trouble with arm side run, uh, the way the ball's spinning. Uh, but his his ball to second base is a true back spinning heater, basically. It's just a fastball that just rides I'd, right over the mound. Um, but, you know, it's it's pretty special. No, Grayson, you have yourself, you have Adley, you have D.L. Hall as another you know, top prospect. The wave of youth is coming here for the Baltimore Orioles. There are a handful of other top prospects, according to numerous outlets here. Can you tell Orioles fans here what is going on in the farm system and why they should be getting excited? Yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of young talent. Um, the Orioles – when I was drafted in 2018, uh, the old regime, uh, you know, they didn't really invest in the international market. Um, that's something that Michael Eyes has come in and done is investing in Latin American players very heavily. Um, seeing them at spring training and in workouts and stuff, you know, there's a lot of young kids out there that can really do something special. And uh, in terms of like draft players, you know, they've really done a good job of drafting a lot of infield and outfield prospects, um, you know, uh, we have about four or five shortstops in our organization right now that could be big leaguers at some point in their career uh, without a doubt. And there's something unique and special about all of them. And I think there's a lot of guys that are hitting for power. There's a lot of home runs being hit, um, you know, kind of that new age of baseball um, that's kind of exciting. And, uh, you know, it's, I think Orioles baseball will be a lot better and uh, it'll look a little different in a couple of years. So, we're, so we're gonna so we'll, we're gonna yeah. say that for now. Nice, that, well, you're right, and so will Camden Yards look a little different by the time you're ready to tow the slab out there because they move the fences back in left field. I mean, you, I know you probably never got a chance to to, to see a lot of Camden Yards, but uh, 
left field was pretty short. I mean, it was, it was uh, pretty easy for lefties to go oppo and right-handers took shot at it, took shot at left field. So yeah, it's going to be a little more of a pitcher's park for you. Maybe by design, probably a good thing, you know, with the, with you on the way and, 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 and some good prospects coming, uh, Maybe maybe Camden Yards will play a little differently. It's going to be interesting to see this year how that works out. By the time you get there, uh, it's going to be a little easier for pitchers, I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, the fences move back, I think, 20 feet, uh, 25 feet almost. And then that's a big difference. You know, that's a that's a difference between a fly ball that's kind of mishit a little bit getting out and, uh, and not. And, you know, we're going to see that a lot um, this year. Um, you know, it's going to take – it's going to take a barrel to get one out, but, uh, you know, like you were saying, it was, it's been a pretty short left field. I think, you know, the ball plays really well for home runs, um, and, and being in the AL East, that's tough because there's a lot of guys that can swing it. And, uh, I think, you know, it'll definitely help out the pitching side of things. Um, you know, in terms of the hitting, um, I think for us, hopefully it won't have an impact, but I do know there's probably going to be a decrease in some home runs, but, uh, you know, I'm kind of, kind of happy about that. Yeah. Grace, we like to end our chats with our guests by giving them a chance to ask something to an upcoming guest on our podcast. So we're going to tell you the name of a guest that is coming up on the show in the near future, and you'll have to come up with a question to ask them, and we'll save the question and give it to them when they appear on the podcast. But we have a question for you. This is a nice cycle that we have, and it comes from... Mike Borzello, he was on with us recently. He's a longtime Cubs coach, and he also was the bullpen coach for the Yankees during their late 90s dynasty. He was the Cubs game strategist, their their pitching specialist. He had a a long list of titles and responsibilities. A lot of players thought of him as kind of like the team's secret weapon when it came to game preparation here. And here is what Mike Borzello had for you. What is his main goal going forward as a pitcher? Is it personal success? Is it winning? Is it money? Is it all of it? What motivates him? And everyone's different. Everyone's going to give you the stock line. Oh, I want to win. But for everyone, it's a different answer. So what makes this guy wake up in the morning and bust his ass and work hard what is the number one thing that he focuses on? That's what I would ask him. Yeah. So, you know, like he kind of predicted the winning factor, um, you know, when you remember past athletes, um, you remember them by winning, basically, you don't ever remember their contracts or how much money they signed for, you know, you remember Michael Jordan for his championships with the bulls. You remember, obviously Tom Brady uh, for all his Super Bowls, you know, no, nobody's talking about how much money Tom Brady's making. They're talking about how many Super Bowls he's winning. And uh, to me, you know, winning world series, um, you know, that's huge. That's the goal. Um, You know, you want to be hosting that trophy at some point in your career. Uh, But for me, I think my personal test is how many times I can hold that trophy up. Um, You know, you remember players just from their successes, um, and I don't, I don't think money really has anything to do with it. Um, you know, obviously, if you're in the game for a long time, you're going to be fine and well off there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for me, it, it has to be winning championships um, and just having success with your team. Um, in terms of personal accolades, you know, Cy Youngs and stuff, is every pitcher's goal, uh, you know, hopefully I'm fortunate enough to win one one day. But, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to have a few more World Series rings and Cy Young trophies sitting on the wall or in the, in the trophy case. That is music to Oriole fans everywhere, for sure, when you're saying multiple World Series trophies. So thank you. I think you passed the the test. You gave the the very A-plus-like answer in the eyes of Oriole fans, right? Yeah, I hope so. You know, (laughs) I hope hope a championship or two will be, uh, you know, make them happy. But, yeah, you know, right now that's the goal. Uh, You know, we're formulating the team to do it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it starts happening here pretty soon. All right, so it is your turn to ask a question here for one of our upcoming guests, and it's someone who's going to be cutting their teeth in the minors, albeit from uh, the the manager's chair, a little different. Rachel Balkovec, who's going to be managing the Yankees minor league team in Tampa this season. She's the first female manager at any level in pro ball, in affiliated baseball. So what question would you have for Rachel Balkovec? 
Mm. Um, you know, I would say uh, whether or not she's going to jog out to the mound or uh, walk out there. Because as a pitcher, you know, you always kind of dread that that walk or that run out there. Um, you know, obviously being here in big league camp, Brandon Hyde, somebody that just about sprints out there. Um, and I've had, uh, I've had some managers in the past take the slow walk and, you know, as a pitcher, you know, when things aren't going well, I think you'd rather have them run out there and, and get it over with, but yeah, whether or not she's gonna, she's gonna run to the mound or, or walk out during a pitch and change. I love that. That's a great question right there. <laughs> Cause you're right. You, you, you get the anxiety built up right there. If you're on the mound, I certainly know what Grayson's saying right there. The, you, there it definitely does lead to anxiety, the, the style of the manager and whether he has the hook or not. That, that's great. I love that. David, you think we're evolving in there? You think more managers are picking up speed as we, uh, as we see the median age of a big league manager kind of drop a little bit. You know, it depends on the it depends on the gait of the individual person, right? And what kind of shape they're in. Rachel Balkovic's in great shape, by the way. And so, but you know, Joe Torre had a bad back, so he kind of had to walk out there, you know. And you know, it, 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 there's some guys that just can't, you know. So yeah, it, it varies from manager to manager. But I, I understand what Grayson's saying there because the anxiety is building as you're on the mound on what's going to happen. You're going to take me out or. You know, if you've had a bad game, you know, the embarrassment. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to factor into that. That simple little question there that, that only a pitcher would understand standing on the mound waiting for a manager to come get him. Absolutely. Yeah, I like that. Do, Grayson, you think she's thought about that yet? Is that something mm, that a manager is cognizant of? I don't know. I mean, you know, she might have done it in spring training already. You know, obviously uh, the managers and, and the coaches got to – you know, got to get warmed up in their aspect too, um, you know, the, with all the games that are happening. But, uh, you know, like I was saying, it's, you won't really know until the lights turn on in April uh, and you're, you're playing at night in some ballparks. So. Well, Rachel's going to be joining us once she's healed up from uh, taking a comebacker in practice. And uh, also after she's been on the job for a couple of weeks, we kind of want to get her reaction on what it's like after two, three weeks under her belt. So we're looking forward to that. Grayson, we look forward to this. We've had you on. You've been nothing but terrific. And man, we wish you the best of luck here out of the gate in 2022. Hopefully we'll see you in the big leagues in a very short time. And when you do uh, go easy on the rest of the AL East, if you can. And we all, you know, we all have the Yankee ties here. I think you know that, but uh, a warning, I guess, to the rest of the AL East, the, the Orioles are coming. They're on the way, right, Grayson? Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to love the American League East. It's challenging, but it's great. All the ballparks are great to pitch in. And uh, you know what? Yeah. When you get there, the key is to stay there. When you make it to the, it's not getting to the big leagues, it's sticking there. And and uh, we'll look forward to seeing your, your debut there. I, I hope I get a chance to call it. But thanks again, Grayson, for coming on. We, pre we appreciate it. And we wish you all the best. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.